আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ আবার কাতু ইউরবান ওয়েলকাম ব্যাক টু অনাদার এপিসোড অফ দি ইসলামিক কলে পডকাস্ট সরি ফর নট রেকর্ডিং দ্য ভিডিও রাইট নাও বিকজ আই ওয়াজ কান টু টায়ার্ড আই ওয়ান্ট টু ডু দিস লাইক চিল ভিডিও অল দা আই নো হাও চিল ইস কান বি ইস কান বি ফ্রি জুসি সো ইয়া হাম ব্যাক উইথ অ্যানাদার ভিডিও অন হিন্দুইজম টুডে ইউ আর ডিসকাসিং শিবলি বেসিকলি শিবলিং আর ইজ এ টাইপ অফ structure uh that is a very weird type of structure that the many hindus uh, in the subcontinent of worship uh it's basically supposed to represent shiva so basically it's something that's worshiped by uh, worshipers of shiva or that kind of people so you might if you have ever been in india you might have seen this structure is basically looks like a, a round shaped thing that uh, people like put milk on top of it or like flowers on top of it and uh and and today we're going to talk about what that thing actually is <laughs> and it's going to be very very interesting so in case you guys don't know there is a lot of conflicting theories about what this thing actually represent there are some who say that this is actually the penis of shiva <laughs> and then there's another theory which is that oh it's just like some kind of metaphysical kind of like weird thing now If you look at all the evidences you will definitely come to the conclusion that this is just the penis of Shiva <laughs> You serious? Thought I don't make this stuff up. There are stories of exactly how this thing came to be worshiped in Hindu society. Now again another disclaimer not all hindus worship this it is only particularly aimed at people who worship this shivlinga speci- specifically and uh, and then i'm going to explain why this is problematic so let's hear uh, let's read a bunch of stories from the purana and see where this idea of worshiping a genital actually came from <laughs> so in shiva purana uh, kotri da shamita uh, shamita for chapter uh, 12 verse 8 to 51 it says once the leading brahmin devotees of shiva engrossed in the meditation of shiva went into the forest for bringing sacrificial twigs in the meantime shiva himself assuming a very hideous form came uh, came there in order to test the devotion he was a very brilliant but stark naked He had smeared ashes all over his body as the sole ornament standing there and holding his penis he began to show all sorts of vicious tricks <laughs> What What the fuck <laughs> Oh boy uh, I wonder what tricks he showed with his penis <laughs> But anyway uh, Hindus was wild man I mean like this uh, this this reads like a like a a parody of a, like a porn a porn movie <laughs> oh boy anyway so yeah uh, so shiva basically came down and uh, he started uh, showing uh, magic tricks with his uh, with his penis <laughs> and then it says it was with a mind to do something pleasing to the forest dwellers that shiva uh that uh that shiva favoriting of the devotees came to the forest at his will the wives of the sages were extremely frightened at this sight or right for so <laughs> the other women excited and surprised approached the lord some embraced him others held his hand the women were engrossed in struggling with one another when the naked sage did not reply the great sages told that horrible purusha you are acting pervertedly and he is this is basically sexual assault <laughs> he is uh, he is going around naked you know touching his penis and just like annoying woman i mean like i don't know what else to say what else to call this and then they said uh, this violates the vedic path hence let your penis fall on the ground when they said that thus the penis of the uh, avaduta avadut uh, who was uh, shiva of wonderful form fell down instantly <laughs> So this guy's dick uh, just fell down because they said so. <laughs> okay, makes sense. That penis burned everything in front. <laughs> so not only did it fell down, it not only did his penis fell down, it actually burned everything.
<laughs> wherever it went, it began to burn everything there. It went to uh, Patala and it went to heaven. It went all over the earth. It never remained steady anywhere. When the naked sage uh, did Brahma said, uh, let the uh, gods uh, propitiate uh, goddess Parvati and pray. If she can assume the form of a vaginal passage, <laughs> that penis will become steady. So basically they're saying that, you know, Parvati who's like the wife of Shiva, I think. If she can become like a vagina, then <laughs> then uh, then uh, his, uh, his wild dick, which is going around destroying everything, is going to become calm. <clears throat> Just can you just imagine like a like a like a wild a penis just running around? <laughs> oh my god! She can assume, and then they're saying asking her, his like wife to like uh, you know become like a vaginal passage. <laughs> anyway, so that his wild penis becomes like steady. The penis shall be drenched with that water, O oh, great sages. When the sprinkling is made with chatra dharya mantras, it will become stable. Parvati in the form of vaginal passage and an auspicious arrow shall form as the pedestal where in the pulus shall be installed in accompaniment of the Vedic mantras. After propitiating Parvati and the bull-bannered bull lord and performing the rites uh, mentioned before, the excellent penis becomes static. <laughs> Shiva becomes delighted and so also Parvati, the mother of the universe. The fullus was held by her in that form then. Uh, it's translated by TRJL Shastri. So yeah, you can read about this story. I'll give you the link to the Shiva Purana. You can read it there. Now, obviously, a lot of Hindus are going to uh, speak a bunch of nonsense about this and say that, ah but the Puranas are not reliable I already made a video where I demonstrated why the Puranas are part of Hinduism and there's nothing here that contradicts the Vedas uh, per se so yes yeah, completely acceptable in Hindu uh, religion so <clears throat> yeah but <laughs> the most ridiculous thing here is that now, obviously, uh, from like a mythological point of view, it, it's like a very funny story. But uh, if you're not, if you're not, if you're being attempted to like trying to take it seriously, uh, basically what the story is saying is that their god, he like uh, he was overcome, he over he was overcome by his own creation. <laughs> this makes no sense. I mean, like, how can you have a god who is all powerful? then at the same time not be all powerful and come to earth and then uh, you know lose his penis <laughs> that makes no sense so it's it, it leads to like a contradiction right and this is one of the main problems of hinduism uh, this idea of anthropomorphism so in case you guys don't know anthropomorphism is the idea is that uh, god is just like his creation but obviously this is an illogical concept the reason it's illogical is because if you built a house, obviously the house, the nature of that house will not be the same as your nature, right? So same, uh, same thing here. If there is a God, he will be nothing like his creation. He just won't be. So, and he'll be perfect. He'll be all powerful because he has to be. And this is why you can never have this type of concept of anthropomorphism a morphistic uh, concept of God can never be real because it's just illogical. It doesn't make sense. And uh, and that's one of the main problems in the Hindu religion, which is that they have this concept of anthropomorphism and it's rampant. It's like crazy. However, here's the funny part. In other areas in Hinduism, they do actually uh, admit, at least in I think in, in Vedic tradition, they do admit that God is nothing like his creation. And yet, here you have stories where God is just like his creation. <laughs> so it's just kind of stupid and dumb. But the thing is that anthropomorphism isn't simply limited to this idea of like these stories of gods like coming down to earth and doing the stupid things. It, it goes beyond that. Like for example, when you build like an idol or a statue and that worship that, 
that is also a form of anthropomorphism because you are literally giving God a human form and then worshipping it. Even if you think that that is not literally uh, you know, God per se, you are still thinking that you are reaching God through that which means it is you know, part of this Godhead, right? Which means again a type of anthropomorphism which means that you know, they are thinking that God is just like his creation. Or God can be in his creation. And uh, and in Padma Purana, it basically in chapter uh, 17, verse 262 to 265, it says, The Gayatri, the giver of bones, uh, said to Rudra, Those men who will worship your genital organ in the form of Fulus, even though it had fallen, began <coughs> being purified and earning merit, uh, thereby will... Uh, share heaven uh, that state which men get by worshipping your genital organ <laughs> uh, in the form of fullus cannot be held by maintaining sacred fire or offering oblation to, into it those who will uh, who will in the early morning worship your genital organ <laughs> in the form of fullus uh, with a believer leaf will enjoy the world of rudra so yeah, basically this uh, <laughs> Purana verse is saying that <laughs> people should worship his penis, which is beyond ridiculous, but you know, I rest my case. Now, a lot of people will deny that and say that, ah, oh, it's not the penis, you know, it's the Sanskrit, this and that, and all these other kind of mental gymnastics. But here's the thing. Uh, if you look at some of the pictures of the oldest temples uh, for example one of the oldest shiva lingam that has been found is from the third century uh, it's called uh, Gud Gudemalam shivling uh, it's literally from third century which is uh, like 300 years before jesus was born and if you look at this uh, temple or you look at this like shivling <laughs> it looks exactly like a penis you know I mean exactly like a penis. Not only does it look like a penis, it looks like a it looks like a circumcised penis. <laughs> and there are many, many temples like this, ancient temples, where you can clearly see the lingam looks exactly like a penis. Now, I understand like this whole story being mythical and whatnot, but how do you deny the fact that people actually worshipped, you know, Shiva's penis? There's no way to deny this. Especially if you look at all these pictures, you can clearly see that people in the past did worship penis of Shiva. <laughs> and there's, there's no denying this. This is something that happened. This is a historical reality. So no matter all any kind of mental gymnastics that many Hindu bhaks or Hindus uh, Shiva worshippers may come up with, the truth is, is that, you know, they worship Shiva's penis. <laughs> that's, 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 there's no way to like sugarcoat this. That's, that's what it is. And when you compile like these stories from the Purana, and because you need to understand the Purana stories are basically oral stories that was written down. And when you couple this with the fact that there are many ancient temples where you have these Shiv Lingams that looks exactly like a penis, I think it's pretty logical to conclude that, you know, Shiva Lingam is Shiva's penis, okay? And the thing that surrounds it is supposed to be this vaginal thing. <coughs> now, to be fair to Hindus, I will say that this is probably the case that this is probably just some kind of allegorical metaphorical story. And this is supposed to be like to represent like, uh, you know, some kind of metaphysical thing, like some, some, something like yin and yang or something, right? I can get by that, right? I can understand that. But here's the thing. Many Hindus, to this day, worship this thing instead of God himself. Now, why would you do that? Why would you disrespect your God like that? I mean, don't you guys claim to be like monotheist? Don't, don't many of you Hindus claim to be monotheist? Then what the hell is this? This is not monotheism. And so I humbly request, like many Hindus, anyone who's watching, to... <coughs> realize that this Hinduism is a corrupted religion. You can clearly see all these kind of man-made ideas that has corrupted into the religion. I do understand that there are messages that are very similar to Islam and I don't, I don't deny them. And I do know <laughs> that there are concepts of monotheism in Hinduism. 
But those concepts get completely diluted when you look at all these kind of man-made nonsense that has been mixed into this. What I mean here is that it's possible that Hinduism is an extremely corrupted form of Islam. It's very much possible that all of these ideas are corrupted versions of what many past prophets of Islam have preached, but it got corrupted just like Christianity and Judaism. Either way, Allah knows best. This, I don't think this has anything to do, to do with like the Vedic religion uh, in terms of how it originally was. And as a matter of fact, many, most, many Hindus will even admit that the Vedic religion had nothing to do with like Linga worship and all this other kind of nonsense. And I have already made a video where I, or I'm making a playlist where I'm trying to show how the Quran is the word of God. And, and hopefully that those video series will convince you that Quran is the word of God. Then you can use the Quran as a criteria to <coughs> look at any religion. Uh, my next offline video would probably be on uh, Shadguru <coughs> and uh, his nonsense. Uh, so I'll see you guys then, inshallah. Uh, thank you guys for watching uh if you like the video like share subscribe and don't feel feel free to uh if you want to support the channel feel free to uh become a patreon or member and uh yeah and inshallah see you guys next time